Just realized my mic was muted the entire time, but we are racing. That's Kevin Ham, uh, Kevin Hamlin in the 42 car, and in the lead right now, the pole sitter is the 30, oh, yeah, 38. That is AJ Foyt, the fourth, and we got trouble in the back. Up and over is Todd Cleaver, barrel rolling, flipping wildly down the back straightaway, and a huge pileup happening around them. Val Wolf nowhere to go. More cars piling in as Curtis Davis down the back straightaway. A huge wreck right off the bat here from Darlington. And caution comes out immediately. Wow, I've never seen anything like that. Man, it's been a minute since we've seen a wreck that big on the first lap. Uh, actually since the first season of the MG Cup Series. But man, we had two separate wrecks actually. What happened here? Drivers trying to get used to this track. They've never been to a track this narrow before. Like in Darlington, a track too tough to tame. It's known for that. And man, they got stacked up there. And wow, nowhere to go. So the 56 of Kevin Grubb gets into the back of Danny of of John John Wood. Sends him down the race or up into the outside wall. The 56 goes back down the racetrack, collects a few more. There's the four. Mike Green, the 49 of Derek Cope getting a piece. The 78 of Jerry Robertson. Now further down, they started wrecking again down the back stretch. And a couple guys that avoided this first wreck didn't avoid the second one. And it was started when the 66. 66 car of Scott Wimmer got up into the outside wall couldn't get off of it he's stuck up against the wall getting that Darlington stripe and then goes from getting the Darlington stripe Darlington stripe to wrecking he's got a car on top of him it's a 06 a Todd Cleaver goes rolling and flipping down the back straightaway look at all these cars getting piled up the track is almost completely blocked nowhere for these guys to go the 23 of Chris Wimmer got thought he got through that Scott Wimmer's brother he thought he got through it was he boy was he wrong man the 06 a cleaver I mean we're gonna have to there's a, a red flag on the track right now cleanups gonna take a while but we're gonna have to stop and just take a look at this we're gonna look at a few onboards here first being with that 66 car let's see what he saw when he got up into the wall there oh tabbed out Whoops. So as you can see here, he's riding along. He's up into the wall. He, kn he knows he's in trouble. He's trying to keep it up there. And the 06 squeeze. There's really nowhere to go as it kind of squeezes and funnels off turn two. And then, man. Wow, that's carnage. Pure chaos. I mean, a lot of good cars taken out in that. Right off the jump here from Darlington. It's really unfortunate. Tim Sauter thought he had, thought he made it through and got into the back of. Uh, let's ride on board with Robbie Gordon here in the seven car. Oh, this gets hit from behind. He gets on the brakes and gets hit from behind by the 33 of Hornaday. And man, wow. Speaking of Hornaday, let's uh, ride on board with Ron Hornaday here. Gets hit by. Oh, so Gordon got hit by. The 01 of Jay Sauter actually then got hit by Hornaday. And then, man, Hornaday went for a ride. This, uh, Papyrus Racing Cars always have an onboard camera on them. So let's ride with Val Wolf here in the 08 machine. He just narrowly avoids that first wreck. Gets a small piece of that there. Rolls down the back stretch. She thinks she's going to find a way. She realizes she can't. She gets on the brakes. She sees a hole, goes for it, it closes up and closes up and yeah. Lots of good cars taken out in that, but Val Wolf didn't seem to get too too much damage. But a lot of good cars with heavy damage here from Darlington. So a quick caution, quick red flag. Not even a lap into it here. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Alright, here we go. We are back from Darlington. Getting ready to kick things right back off where we left off. And oh boy, was, was it crazy where we left off. 
the 08 Val Wolf still on the racetrack right now, but she is a lap down, the only lapped car on the track right now. The 38 AJ Foyt, the fourth, still your leader. The 42 of Kevin Hamlin's moved up in the second. Dale Jr. has fallen back to fourth in that number eight car. And the 30 of Stedman Marlin has worked his way up in the third. Here we go through three and four. Val Wolf gonna try to hopefully stay out of the way here as we head down the front straightaway get ready to see this green flag and there it is we are rolling once again here from Darlington and Val does not get going too good she's gonna stay to the inside there's really uh, not much room and there's the bottleneck. There it is. They're getting all stacked up here trying to avoid the 08 car. The 86 is back there as well. Chris Mack, and he's going to go around. We got more wrecking down the back straightaway as he got stacked up big time there. Val Wolf up and over. A bad crash here at Darlington for Papyrus Racing and more specifically the Venezuelan Val Wolf. She goes upside down and another wild wreck here from Darlington. Another pile up. These drivers, a lot less experienced, uh, mixed in with uh, some very experienced and aggressive drivers, and it just doesn't play out too well. And they're not really sure what to do here because it's stacked up. You see the 86 gets loose off the corner. I'm not sure if they made contact or what. We'll have to. See, he's not really, you can't really see too well because there's other cars right there. It doesn't look like the 31 is too close, but he does get loose. Bounces off. Oh man, there's Steve Park in the 31 car. And I mean, all these guys just get stacked up. And then the 08 saves it, but then here comes Hornaday with a full head of steam. Just sends it right up into the outside wall, head on into the outside wall. And she gets toppled over onto her roof. Man, some wild stuff here. From, uh, from Darlington. You see the 88, Mark McFarlane gets collected. Brad T. Steve Park gets it rolling again. Chris Mack trying to work his way back. Or, excuse me, Jerry Cook trying to work his way back through. That was Jerry Cook that got loose, not Chris Mack. Cook making his first start here from Darlington. Just trying to uh, get his feet wet with some of these intermediate tracks, and well, not a good, not a good introduction. Picked probably the toughest track to do so to make his debut, but uh, still not a very good introduction to intermediate track racing. Hopefully we'll see him back. Chris Mack out of action, though, after that horrible wreck at Watkins Glen. So we'll see how things go from there. He's doing a, a couple of races trying to uh, see if he can manage, but this is such a tough track, he is not going to said he's not even going to attempt to run this race or Southern 500 like that but here we go green flag is back in the air we are racing once again and Mac not injured injured just still feeling the effects um, nothing serious nothing that'll keep him sidelined for too long he's just uh, out some soreness and some other things but he'll be back behind the wheel soon uh, probably next no nah, not next race because that is a that is at at uh, Pikes Peak <clears throat> but we'll see Chris Mack part time anyway um, this season for 
both divisions was originally supposed to run the full season for the MG Cup Series and part-time and Money Grand National decided to run part-time at both so we'll see when this next race is but he should be able to run that one it's not he's not out he's not gonna be out for too long it's not too bad of an injury uh, or really not an injury it's just a bit of soreness kept him out of, out of the car this week last week and uh, yeah I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm not sure when this video is going up in relation to Watkins Glen. But hopefully it makes sense. Shane Meal is leading the race right now, by the way. The 30 of Stedman Marlin trying to hang on to second. But here comes Dale Jr. with a huge run. He knows exactly what he's doing with all that experience behind the wheel. He gets by Stedman Marlin with ease. And now Marlin trying to hang on to third place as here comes Kevin Hamlin. In the number 42 car, nice to see Kevin Hamlin getting that break finally, as he raced in the in the past series, or races in the past series, and uh, doesn't have a ride for next season, but definitely is uh, one to watch. The inaugural past series champion last season, and looking to uh, just finish out this season. But now it gets a ride in the Chip Ganassi owned 42 car part time, sharing it with Casey Mears and Juan Pablo Montoya will be in the car at some point. Mears did a majority of the races and now these these two looking to fill in the rest. Thirty-eight of left of uh, Jason Leffler, or excuse me, AJ Foyt, the fourth. Leffler's not in this race. Um, AJ Foyt, the pole sitter, looking to get by Hamlin. Close contact. Kevin Hamlin's in the inside wall. Back across the track into the outside wall. He's gonna keep it straight, but that's gonna hurt his run big time. Look at the damage on that 42 car. That is really gonna hurt him. We were just talking about how he finally got a break. This is not how he wanted that first race to end. Dale Jr. is your leader once again. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Alright, we are back and we're under caution for an incident. Uh, not sure where. Watch the pace car and play a game of Who Done It. on the track or something there's a lot of damaged race cars out on the track right now so wouldn't surprise me green flag back in the air we're racing once again here from Darlington here comes AJ Foyt the fourth once again on the inside Dale Jr. side by side here comes Stedman Marlin next to Shane Mule the 19 a Chad Blunt up there as well About the 30. That 30 car now looks to have woken up and Stedman Marlin charged into the front. He moves his way up in the second place. The 38 falls back. He's stuck on the high side getting freight train. Can't carry quite as much speed up there. How about the 86 of Jerry Cook working his way back up inside the top 10. Now Jerry Cook in his first start doing a great job right now or maybe second start I don't know but doing a great job 
after a little bit of trouble earlier on, but he's seems to have recovered now. Battle for second, tightening up. spread out and uh, looks like we're gonna run green to the end here but lap traffic becoming a factor not really um, Dale Jr. is gone he is putting a whooping on the field five seconds over AJ Foyt the fourth in that 38 car and whoa 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 who spun John Andretti in the 10 car goes around on the front straight away but down low out of the way got spun by our race leader Dale Jr. he's out of the way and gets it going again so it's not going to be a caution but quick spin for Andretti and he about drove back up into the in the traffic so that could have been a caution, but everyone made it by him, so he's looks like he's fine for now. He's just gonna lose a couple pos couple positions, but keeping it green, Dale Jr. Um, continuing on this dominant run from Darlington, and he's gonna come around the five to go. Johnny Sauter in the double zero car in just a second, but coming through three and four, take four laps to go, and well, the gap's starting to close a bit. AJ Foyt, the fourth, has managed to gain a couple of seconds on Dale Jr., and he's still gaining due to all the lap traffic, but Looking at how many cars are in between the two, I think it's highly unlikely that the 38 will get there. He's going to have to deal with all those lapped cars. And Dale Jr., he's got just one more ahead of him. And it's debatable whether or not he'll even catch him. Because this, this other teammate, the 11, Paul Menard, so similar speed in those cars. And, well, Menard's had a pretty rough race. Uh, he may just let the eight car by, but either way, these two probably not going to hold each other up. Coming around two laps to go. For Dale Jr. As we watch from your spectator cam, and he is going to catch Menard in the absolute worst spot to catch him right off the exit of turn two so you need to carry your momentum down the back straight away in the turn three and he had to lift but it's not going to make much of a difference i think he's going to let him finish on the lead lap as he takes the white flag he's no he's in no hurry to pass that 11 car i think he's going to let menard keep his lap and just take the win. That 11 car is the last car on the lead lap. Dale Jr. Peeks out to see where he's going, but he's not peeking out to make the pass. Off a of turn for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's going to get the win from Darlington. And a very strange race, to say the least. At least from the first couple of restarts there. Um, 
end and how it went towards the end as well. But that's going to do it. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. We'll see you all next time. Until then, peace.